Okay, so this is part five. I've called the branch validation, so no prizes for guessing what we're going to be working on on this one. Before we get into writing any code, let me just show you something. Choose high definition for the best viewing experience, and if you'd like to join a growing group of software developers and take your skills to a new level, all you need to do is subscribe, click the little notification icon, and welcome. If I want to go and create a record at the moment, if I want to create a manufacturer, I just come to the user interface here, click try it out like we did before. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to leave the name blank. Uh, description, I'll just make up something random. So random description, um, we'll put a country code of UK. And then for the listed date, uh, that will still work like that. So if I go and execute this. Okay, so we get 201, which means that a record has been created. And if we look at the record which has been created, it says that the name is blank. Let's go and look at our database and just confirm what it's telling us here. So refresh the manufacturers. And so as you can see, we have a new manufacturer has been created, ID of three, but we have an empty name. Do we really want to be creating manufacturers that that have empty names or do we even want to allow users to be able to create a manufacturer with no name it doesn't make sense to have a manufacturer with no name so we need to put some measures in place to prevent this from happening and the way we're going to do that is we're going to use validation so uh, what we use is symphony's validator um, component and the same way that where we marked uh, the class as an API resource using attributes, we can do the very same thing using attributes to mark uh, to actually add our validation. So use symphony component validator constraints as assert. So that's a typical way that we do this, that we add them. And the way that this will work is when the um, information, when the JSON is received, by our API, by the back end, what happens is it gets deserialized from JSON into an object, into these objects that you see here that we've uh, created our resource from. And it's going to be at that point when we're actually deser deserializing that the validation will be triggered. And if it doesn't meet the certain constraints, the requirements of the constraints, then what will happen is a validation error will be created and then a response will be sent back saying, um, hey, I couldn't create this resource for you because this this information is either missing or it's incorrect or however we set up the constraint. In this uh, case here, we're just going to leave ID. That will be created by the database. But for the name, what we're going to do is we're going to add one called not blank. Okay. And then for the description, we're going to do the same. And so not blank means that you can't... Uh, we won't be able to try and insert an empty string. So same again, not blank. And it's going to be the same for most of these. We'll just keep it simple. I don't want this to become like a big validation lesson because this is a API platform crash course, not an in-depth course. It's to get you up and running, but I'm just showing you how. And then if you want to dive into it a bit more deeply, then of course, go ahead and do that. So country code again, not blank. Uh, listed date, what we're going to use here is we're going to say not blank null so just going to do the same thing leave it blank and so don't refresh your page or anything just if you've been following along just use the exact same uh, detail that what we used here we're going to click execute and this time we should see a 422 status code which we do which means it's a validation error and so let's uh, examine the detail the information that we've got back here so it says context api contexts constraint violation list type constraint violation list and then uh, we have hy hydra title and error occurred and then it says the description name colon this value should not be blank so it's saying that the name field we've tried to insert a blank name field uh, it's not allowed us and so it's come back with this uh, 422 error response, which is perfect. Let's refresh our database just to make sure that nothing has been inserted. And as you can see, before it's even got to that stage, it's actually triggered uh, the constraint violation and returned us our response. So it's working perfectly. 
we're going to need to do the same thing for the product. So if you want to have a go at that, then of course, pause me now. And because I think by practicing these things, it makes the knowledge stick. So next time you come to do it, because you've actually thought about it yourself, it'll just make it easier. But here's how I'm going to do it. It's going to be very similar to the manufacturer. So first thing we need to do is add our use statement for the constraints. So it will be use symphony component validator constraints as assert. Let's just go down these properties. ID is going to be generated by the database for MPN. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to say not null for this one. And then for the name, we'll say not blank. Description. So exactly the same as what we did for manufacturer, really, not blank. And then for the issue date, we'll go with not null. And so we need the uh, post operation to API products, MPN. Let's actually uh, we'll leave that blank. And so it said that can't be null. So what I'm going to do is actually I'm just going to remove it completely. And then for the rest of these. Uh, for the name, we'll actually leave that blank. We'll try and trigger a couple of constraint violations. Description, a random description, and then issue date, we'll just leave that as that. And we'll actually add a uh, viable manufacturer, so it will be API manufacturers, and then we'll say manufacturer number one because we know we've got one of those. Let's click on execute. And so we get a 422 back, which is good news. And as you can see, this time we have a couple of violations. So the information is pretty much the same here. Hydra description, NPM, this value should not be null. And then it says um, new line. So you see the little new line character there, and it says name, this value should not be blank. But you see our violations uh, array this time is we have um, two items in there. So NPM and name and they have different uh, error messages for the not null one it says this value should not be null and for the uh, not blank it says this value should not be blank okay perfect so that's working great we now know that users can't use our api to insert records into the database which have uh, incorrect data or which have missing data and so mission accomplished if you've enjoyed this video and you'd like YouTube to show you more of my content, all you need to do is subscribe and click the notification icon. Each week I release a number of new recordings. If you'd like to be informed about my upcoming videos as well as receive exclusive content, discounts and early access to my new videos, you can join my mailing list by following the link underneath this video.